Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 21st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier found an interesting Python script that actually looks like it sort of is trying to re-implement the Mirai bot in Python. Not really sure sort of why, but it's really more or less just a wrapper around CMAP. And yes, for sure, there are still plenty of uh, devices out there that are exposing Telnet and either haven't been uh, actually exploited yet and Xavier also found quite a number of devices that of course have been exploited for uh, quite a while. For example, by the Pricker bot that has been a couple of years old or so and a simple reboot would probably fix some of these devices. And Google released an update to Chrome that fixes four high and one medium severity vulnerability. And now uh, one vulnerability that uh, makes this update more interesting and probably also more urgent is CVE 2020 15 999. It's a heap buffer overflow in free type. And apparently this one has already been exploited in the wild. And of course, the zero logon vulnerability has kept Windows administrators kind of busy lately, but don't forget in certain cases, the Linux Samba implementation may also be affected of this vulnerability. QNAP now released an updated version of its firmware QTS for its devices, for its network storage devices that addresses this vulnerability. Now, you're really only vulnerable if you are configuring the device as a domain controller. Not really sure how common this configuration is, but anyway, you know, please apply this update. And just to emphasize that this is a Linux problem or Samba problem, not a QNAP problem per se. So if you do run a network act storage device that is Linux based, which many of them are, and you are using it as a domain controller, then you're probably vulnerable unless you did patch this vulnerability. And Kaspersky is reporting that the gravity rat malware is apparently uh, mutating. Now, originally this was found uh, in August 2017 by the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team and Cisco Talas also wrote about it in 2018. Back then it was sort of your standard uh, Windows malware. It arrived as a macro in an office uh, document. What made it sort of more interesting was that it was sort of your typical sort of nation state spyware in a sense that it was targeting Indian Air Force. And it was often being uh, sort of associated with uh, some hacking group in Pakistan. Further supporting sort of that government background, this malware was mainly interested in exfiltrating documents. So basically, you know, spying on their old victims. Now, Kaspersky is now reporting that they found a new version of uh, this malware targeting other operating systems, in particular Android and Mac OS. Again, the infection vector here doesn't appear to be all that fancy. No Word documents, of course, with macros, instead essentially just applications that the user is tricked into willingly install on their devices. And of course, once on the device, the malware will then again exfiltrate data. One application for Android that Kaspersky points out is Travelmate, sort of a travel organizing application. And that then, of course, comes with the additional payload. And then as an awareness item uh, to share with people, uh, the FBI released a special uh, flash bulletin that warns of various websites attempting to spoof uh, the U.S. Census. Of course, uh, the U.S. Census of the official uh, date for it was April uh, this year, but it's still going on and there is a big sort of publicity push to sort of get people uh, to submit uh, their census. 
various forms uh, because there's sort of a deadline uh, coming up uh, for it. Well, and looks like the bad guys are listening here as well and are registering numerous domains that contain the word census, like for example, uscensus.us. I think uh, that's a pretty good one. Various varieties of that with dashes or also things like, for example, uscensusbureau.co or .com. The official site of the Census Bureau is census.gov and then they also have a special 2020census.gov website for the census itself. But rule of thumb, if it doesn't end in .gov, it's not a legitimate US Census site. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.